Evaluating the literature is probably the most dreaded aspect of writing the literature review. This fear may stem from two misconceptions about academic writing. The first is that academic writing is always objective, impersonal, and unemotional. Nothing but the cold hard facts. Under this assumption, expressions such as beautiful, fascinating, lonely, absurd, or unfair would have no place in academic texts. Let's examine this hypothesis. If we search in Google Scholar, we find almost a million hits for the term fascinating. Now, some may think that this will come mostly from the arts or humanities. But if we look at the results, we can see that most of them come from biology and chemistry. Let's see how evaluative language is used in this article in more detail. This article is about monodispersed colloids, that is, substances that have particles of similar size and look like this under a microscope. Hit the space bar now to pause the video. This paragraph has quite a number of instances of evaluative language. First, let's identify what's being evaluated. In this paragraph, the writer is evaluating monodispersed salts and the ways of preparing them. That is, what's being evaluated is the object of study. This is being qualified as interesting, as seen here, and they are of interest because they are important and useful for particular research purposes. And on top of it, they're also beautiful. I honestly can't tell about important or interesting. I'll take the author's word for it. But they truly are beautiful. So when reading literature reviews, try to identify what is being evaluated. In this case, it's the object of study. But it could as well be a methodology, a theory, or a hypothesis. When we think about evaluation, we usually think about good or bad, but these are very broad categories. As this example illustrates, we can also think about aspects such as relevance, usefulness, validity, or the amount and quality of evidence to support an idea. It's relatively easy to evaluate your object of study. After all, you've decided to spend a few years of your life devoted to it. Critiquing other people's work might be more challenging. This leads us to the second misconception. Some students think that evaluating previous work means you're the panda and previous research is at poor guy's desk. But no. Critiquing doesn't mean destroying or saying all previous research is wrong, useless, and invalid. Remember Newton's quote about standing on the shoulders of giants? Well, most of the sources you will cite will be your giants. That is, you will use them to place your research in context, to state how far your discipline has come, and to indicate your starting point to move knowledge forward. Let's illustrate this with an example. You will read an excerpt from a thesis on the emotional labor of women working for an NGO. The writer is reviewing an important study about the role of emotions in the workplace, more specifically on the emotional labor of flight attendants. Hit the space bar to pause the video. In the first sentence, the writer evaluates Hochschild's work as pivotal. Stating the importance of a study is a common move when introducing sources. The rest of the paragraph is more of a summary than an evaluation. However, the use of uncovers frames the whole study in a positive light, as the author has exposed what was hidden before. Notice the use of abstract language, human emotions, socialization, private feelings, wage labor, corporate use. The writer has not revealed yet the specific context of Hochschild's study. What industry did she focus on? What workers? In what country? The purpose is to find parallels with the writer's own study. Let's continue reading the rest of the paragraph. Hit the space bar to pause the video. Here the writer is providing the specifics of the study. The reader knows now that it took place in the US and focused on flight attendants. Notice also how the evaluation is more explicit and is expressed with different grammatical forms. An in-depth qualitative account is a noun group. Contributed significantly is a verbal group modified by an adverb. Exposes is another verb that works like uncovers. It is positive evaluation as it creates new knowledge by making visible what was not previously known. 
I will show you now some of the most frequent expressions used to positively evaluate a study. These adjectives refer to the importance of the study. They might be important because they are innovative, such as groundbreaking, and or because they have stood the test of time and served as a model for subsequent research, like classical or seminal. Research also values new knowledge. It is assumed that the latest research will make progress on what has been done before. So citing a recent study suggests a positive attitude towards its claims. As with the object of study, we can also refer to how much interest a study arises. Another aspect that can be evaluated is the study's methodology. Here, the focus would be on the validity and reliability of results. Highlights can include the quality of the analysis, the sample size, or the number of variables accounted for. We can do this using expressions that explicitly indicate an opinion, such as in-depth, systematic, or extensive. Or we can use more factual language. For example, when we use an expression such as a 10-year study, we are highlighting time as a more reliable indicator of good research. Likewise, a cross-cultural study may provide more reliable data than a monocultural one if culture is a relevant factor or a national study may have more validity than one with a local sample. We are also evaluating when we use verbs that indicate that a study's findings can be interpreted with a high degree of certainty. So if we say that a study determined or established something, the finding is being presented as a fact. Obviously, this list is not exhaustive. All of these examples evaluate previous research positively. Do not be surprised if most of your literature is discussed in these terms. However, you will have to identify some negative or neglected aspect in previous work. Otherwise, your research might not be needed. Maybe there's an aspect that has not been given enough attention, a methodology that is not quite efficient, or simply inconsistency in the results. I will show you some examples now. The excerpt that you will read comes from a thesis on steel joints. If you're not an engineer, you might not find this topic terribly fascinating. But you do not want your building to collapse, do you? Hit the space bar to pause the video. Here, the writer is evaluating methods to model joints. Rather than saying that the methods are wrong, the writer points out the limitations in each method. Notice how the writer starts with a positive evaluation of the method, and the limitation is introduced afterwards via the however. This is a good rule to apply whenever you need to provide negative feedback. Start with the positive. Notice also how the writer goes from very concrete, the characteristics of joints, to the abstract concept of flexibility. Navigating between concrete examples and abstract concepts is a feature of effective academic writing. Our second example comes from the humanities. It explores the presence of women minorities in STEM fields, you know, science, technology, engineering, and medicine. Hit the space bar to pause the video. Here, the criticism is a lack of focus on a particular aspect. This is definitely a go-to when it comes to reviewing previous research. You are very likely to be considering an aspect that has not been properly examined before. In the initial stages of your literature review, you will have identified similarities and differences among studies using a table, probably. This will allow you to make claims like the one highlighted here. Notice the comparative used. This is an example of how you can synthesize results from different studies in one or a few sentences. Our final example is from the field of criminology. It discusses the origin of self-control in children. Hit the space bar to pause the video. Here, the writers introduce a claim from a source and proceed to rebuke it. To do so, they effectively use the author's exact words in the quote, as they will later present evidence to challenge it. They summarize their point in this sentence, and later present the specific studies supporting their position. Notice that the writers evaluate these studies positively using many of the aspects listed earlier in the video. Here, they refer to the recency of one study and also add specific quantifiable results. In this one, they refer to the methodology and sample size. 
And with the final one, they use an adverb that strengthens the claim introduced by the reporting verb suggest. So you might want to reframe the idea of evaluating previous research as positioning your work in regards to it. Most of the literature you review will probably have set the foundations of your field. You need to establish how far this previous work has taken you. But you also need to indicate where the gaps, the inconsistencies, and the differences of opinion lie. By doing so, you demonstrate the need for your own research, which is the main purpose of the literature review.